FS Data Desktop was designed to improve the field experience of our customers. It features a simple, intuitive user interface, set up wizards to guide you through installation, and smart program checks to reduce the chance of program errors. This tutorial video will introduce you to several of the features and terminology used in the program. This is part two of the Instrument Dashboard tutorial. In this video, we will cover the FloatR sensor. In the lower right hand corner of the dashboard, you can see your sensor connection status and port assignments. You must have a sensor connected to perform calibrations, but all the other sensor settings can be updated without a sensor connected. We are going to assume that the FloatR sensor and if equipped, surcharge velocity sensor are connected to the logger for this video. Here is a list of channels we suggest you log. If you want to make changes back under the general settings tab, you may pause the video now. OK, now that everything is set to log, select the sensors tab to begin configuring the sensor. If the FloatR sensor is not selected in the pull down list, be sure to select it now. At this point you have two options. You can use the setup wizard or you can choose to manually configure sensor settings. The setup wizard will walk us through the first two tabs called out here. The configuration options available on these first two tabs will satisfy the installation and setup requirements of most users. Let's go through the setup wizard now. Select the number of sensor readings to average during the calibration process. Typically, only one is necessary, but in extremely turbulent flow conditions, you might choose to select more than one. Enter the flow settings by selecting the channel geometry and entering the appropriate dimensions. Select the type of ultrasonic transducer installed in the sensor. The illustration changes according to what type you select. So if you are unsure, change the type and then compare the illustration to your sensor. Next, select the checkbox if a surcharge velocity or SVS sensor is being used. Again, the illustration will change based on selection so you can verify what you have by comparing to the illustration. If you are using the SVS sensor, you will be asked to select the port the SVS will be connected to. Select the measurement method for calibrating the ultrasonic level. Direct measures the distance from the bottom of the channel to the top of the frame and is the most common method used. Indirect requires you to measure the depth of the water and enter that value. Be aware that some error checking is performed during the setup wizard to prevent program errors. If you get an error message, read what the message says and make adjustments if necessary. You can also select retry if you believe the message was received by mistake. Measure and enter the average velocity obtained with your profile velocity meter or select from one of the profile methods to have your average velocity calculated for you. This input will generate a velocity multiplier for site velocity calibration. If you do not wish to perform a site velocity calibration, you will need to cancel to exit out of the setup wizard and proceed through the manual process. Review the setup results. Click Finish, then Write to Logger to complete the setup process. It is best practice to verify the calibration at this point. To do so, select the Diagnostic tab here. Select the FloatR sensor from the pull-down list if it isn't already selected. Left mouse click on the Take Measurement button. When the Take Measurement button is selected, it forces the sensor to take a measurement and display the results in the panel here. A successful measurement will look like this. Make sure the values populated make sense to you.
The button labeled Log Diagnostics enables sensor diagnostics logging on the connected logger. This means that for the duration chosen on the right, all FFT, quality parameters, and sub-measurements will be recorded as part of the data log. The diagnostic files logged can be viewed in the downloaded file in FSData desktop or on the web with FSData if the logger is wireless enabled. I will now point out the features and functionality of the remaining buttons and controls found in the Sensors tab. Restore Sensor will clear all input fields and return all sensor settings to a fresh state. Use this feature only if you want to completely start from scratch. Units will enable you to override the preferred units for level, velocity, and flow in the FLODAR program settings menu for this session only. The Basic Setup tab will allow you to select the ultrasonic transducer type, calibrate the ultrasonic level, calculate a site multiplier for site velocity calibration, input SVS sensor selections, enter a sediment level, and level calibration. The sensor height is used to allow the sensor to calculate the water level. To enter the sensor height manually, use one of the following methods. Method 1. Click the Calculate button found just to the right of the sensor height input field. Follow the on-screen instructions. Method 2. Measure the sensor height, which is from the base of the frame to the bottom of the channel, and input the value measured into the field here, and then write to logger. If after performing a manual sensor height method, you feel the level needs an adjustment, you can perform a level calibration by performing one of the following methods. Method 1. Click the Calculate button found just to the right of the sensor height input field. Follow the on-screen instructions. Method 2. Enter a positive or negative offset in the field here to make the value received in current status or a diagnostic reading match your physically measured level, and then write to logger. The Flow Setup tab provides the input fields for the primary device, or more specifically, the channel geometry and flow calculation method. In greater than 90% of all installations, the Basic Setup and Flow Setup tabs are the only tabs that are needed. In sites with difficult hydraulics or less than ideal site conditions, it may be necessary to make adjustments to the Advanced and or Tech Support Settings tabs. The Advanced Settings and Tech Support Settings tabs are typically only used by the most advanced users or under the guidance and advice of Hawk Tech Support. Within these tabs are settings that can be used to fine-tune a FLODAR's performance in difficult sites. Remember to select Write to Logger to complete your programming changes by sending the settings to the logger. For more detailed information on any of the features mentioned in this video, check for specific individual videos in the list on the webpage.